She was an array of diverse and creative talents residing in Leftbridge, who often feel they have to leave Leftbridge to search for a bigger platform, stage of support. I've always been fascinated by the local artists and music scene, and this led me to start wondering as Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal are becoming the staple for Canadians in the art and music scene. Are there notable artists emerging from small communities? What does it mean to be a local artist? Do they feel disconnected from the bigger scenes? What makes them keep going and what motivates them to make music even though it might not be heard by millions amount of people? To answer this question, we went on a journey with several artists from the Leftbridge music and art scene as they shared their unique voices, stories and talent. Well, to give you a bit of an overview of Leftbridge, it's a growing city located in the southern province of Alberta with a population of over 100,000. Leftbridge is well known and recognised for its agriculture industry and post-secondary institutions, which play an essential role in the city's infrastructure, tourism, retail and service sectors. It also gets really windy here too. But Leftbridge's best kept secret is its music and art community in spite of all of that. There is much more happening under the surface of this small community and its music and art scene is rapidly evolving beyond its country roots. The problem is though, the secret's a little too secret. So over time, many talented artists have felt they had to leave Leftbridge to search for a bigger platform or opportunities to advance their careers or showcase their art and music. Well, this led to Windy City Highlights where we celebrate diverse artists and musicians from varying backgrounds in the Leftbridge community, and each episode profiles and interviews an artist to get an insight into their artistic journey and experience. My name is Mike Spencer. Uh, I'm the founder and director of the Geomatic Attic. If you if you go backwards to 2008, I'd say that the the music and art scene was just sort of finding its feet. We had some real potential, but I'd say it's certainly musically the the scene has really started to blow up here. Lethbridge is a small large city, isn't it? Um, I've been here my whole life, so I've seen many changes throughout my life. I think it's becoming a lot more diverse, which is good. Um, there's a lot more live music and things going on here that is, is great to see. Um, yeah, it's growing. It's growing into a big city, but it still kind of has that small city vibe. It's very vibrant. It's I call it a it's our hidden treasure. I don't know that everybody is really super aware of the vibrancy, the number of working artists living within our community. Um, so it replicates that experience I had at university of having a very strong, diverse arts community here. People, artists working in all disciplines from theater to dance to music to visual arts. They know each other because we're small. They're, they connect with each other. They work with each other. There's, so it's a pretty tight community and it sort of percolates under the, under the covers, um, not always recognized necessarily by the larger community. Um, so yeah, I think we're fortunate in Lethbridge to have the arts community and the group of artists we do. I'd say it's definitely like small, but unique and dedicated and like it's definitely one of those places that big touring acts, if they do, you know, stop by, take a little detour from the, their main main Canadian stops, yeah. they're always blown away. I think by just how people show up, show out, and like the energy we have. But I mean that that's just a factor of there not being very many shows here mm -hmm. regularly, and and the scene being completely self sustaining. Like mm -hmm. it's it's locals here putting on the shows all the time, and anytime that somebody huge will come through it's it's like a big celebration for us to showcase the local acts yeah. but then also have a big party with everybody else so, i don't know cool. what do you think yeah i mean i'd say just like pretty tight-knit you know a little 
a little bit of an everybody knows everybody vibe, or if you don't know somebody, you know somebody that they know sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's cool, right? Everybody's very supportive of each other and, like, you know, likes to see other people from Westbridge succeed. I don't know. If somebody from Westbridge made it and they were shouting out Westbridge, we'd all be so stoked on it, right? It was. Just, like, everybody. So they'll, uh, you know, definitely show the support, you know, when you, when you put on these events and stuff. The, the people who are into it are definitely into it and they like come through regularly. Lethbridge is a super unique city. I think it's a very interesting blend of a student population and an older demographic and anywhere in between. Um, I think it's a, it's a growing city, a lot of potential for the city. We're already in a good place and I think there's only the only way is up. Um, I think the, the downtown Lethbridge area specifically is very unique because it's a lot of old buildings, a lot of history here, but we're really, we're bringing a lot of innovative people, a lot of new ideas into this space, um, and kind of the relationship between those two is very, it's really cool to watch. Mm -hmm. um, it's very different from other downtown areas in Alberta, like Calgary, Calgary yeah. downtown Calgary is amazing, but it can be very overwhelming. Yeah. If you come to downtown Lethbridge, everything's within walking distance. All the people are very personable, a lot of the, the local community is, is very important to the business owners here. First and foremost, Lethbridge is uh, it's an enigma because we have many different passionate groups. And we also have a very transient community of individuals that come here for school that would be the most attendant to go out to shows or be a part of scenes. We have music department students and everybody has their own specific drive what what they they can go to and then also everybody has their own specific budget of what they can afford there's a standard of excellence i think that like there's not enough venues to go on in town um but there's also not enough um disposable income to be able to support big events so you usually look for like Beginning of the year, let's go. Everybody has student loans. Or end of the year, like, let's send it. Between those parts, everybody's extremely busy. Or it's winter and we're all depressed. And then the summertime comes and everybody's like, well, it's beautiful outside and the mountains are right there. I want to go. So I think that, like, the music community thrives around pre-planned events. We've got some really deep uh, level of talent in lots of different genres. Um, I think we could be one of those cities like Winnipeg often gets spoken about in, the, in this way. Halifax does. It's got kind of like a vibe where it's a great incubator for uh, talented musicians, um, entertainers. Uh, and I think Lethbridge is kind of on the cusp of being a city like that. And that's gone from when you asked me about, you know, 14 years ago, mm -hmm. I think we were probably known as a very conservative city where, you know, nobody's stopping over. Um, and, you know, in many ways, it's still very conservative. But, you know, I think we're kind of nibbling at the edges and pushing the boundaries a little bit with the mm -hmm. uh, types of acts that we've got here. So we love being part of that. Really awesome hip hop scene here. The rest of it is a bit folky. I'm not really my vibe. But Lethbridge actually does have a pretty good thriving music community, I would say. Mm. Yeah. But it is, it is hella racist. Though. Yeah, it's a tough place to grow up, man, that's for sure. And I don't know if it's just because of the, the population here, but I feel like there's a lot of ignorance in this place, and not everyone carries those beliefs, but I think there just needs to be more openness to other people who are different, because um, there is a little bit of a mentality kind of around some of the older folks who live here. Um, and then they teach it to their young, and then the cycle just repeats. And so mm. I, I, I need a little bit more openness from Lethbridge mm. um, to different things, cultures, food, music, all of it. I and mean, we do have communities that do offer those things, but mm. as I mentioned before, they're pretty small. But it's also still a very, like a very small prairie city with very, very conservative people who are, are less innovative, let's say. Um, good people, but, but very conservative, very traditional values. There's like a pretty strong like conservative uh, like value in this area. So uh, the gallery 
is pretty counter to that. And I still think that there's like a large progressive community in Lethbridge uh, with the university, the college present, uh, the arts galleries and these values of the arts. The value isn't, you know, immediately always recognized. And I think we'll start communities would say that, but I think that the value proposition, the understanding of that, here we get a lot of pushback around, you know, is, yeah, well, it's, it's a hobby and the arts are nice, but they really are luxury. And right now, fiscally, we, we shouldn't, can't support them. And it, that's, that's it's, it's reverse thinking, actually. The reality is that the arts contribute, they do contribute to individual personal health and well-being. They contribute very much on a broader, more social level to the well-being of community and mental health and learning and all those kinds of things. But they also do have uh, an economic benefit to a community. I mean, having all these wonderful artists living here paying taxes here, working in businesses here, supporting the small businesses has a huge impact. It's much the same as a university. So um, it, it's, that's the hardest thing. That's the most discouraging. And, and also messaging, working really hard to send those messages out to the world. And it keeps blowing back. Like nobody's listening, you know? Lethbridge is small. I describe Lethbridge as being small. And it's a bit tough if you're a person of color or someone who belongs to a marginalized group, um, just because some of the people who live here have a lot of outdated beliefs. And so I always say that like, Lethbridge is the place where I know I'm black because people make it very clear to me. One of the things that I've learned is that the, the city of Lethbridge you know, has been growing you know, and growing and growing and Generations don't grow as quickly as communities often do. And because of that, um, change can you know, be happening very, very quickly. And I think the community isn't always on board with the pace of change. You know, when I first moved here um, in September 2011 for university, you know, it was different. It was different, you know, I said for the first time living in Canada, being a Northeast Calgary kid, uh, Lethbridge was the first time I felt like a visible minority, right? You know, it was just crazy, just kind of like coming in and, you know, you're trying to, you know, find what works, you know, you're trying to create your own scene and you're trying to collaborate with people, right? Because that's what I think, you know, music, art, whatever it is, I just, that's how I see it. It's a collaboration. You have like all these different elements. You have a guitarist. You have a bassist, you have a drummer, you have all these different colors. If you're a painter, like you have to get all these individual elements to work together, mm. right? So it was initially challenging initially to try and like, you know, meet people and work with people. But then, you know, the universe moves in funny ways and, <laughs> and like-minded people kept coming into the city and started connecting with more like-minded people. And then we decided, you know what? Like, it's easier to complain about the scene Screw it, let's create our own scene. Let's do what we want to do. With respect to, to Lethbridge, uh, with the two universe, with the university, the college, uh, there are a lot of young people. And that vibrancy, uh, and because the learning institutions are there, it, it always, I think, evokes that sense of curiosity. And I think it's kind of different from us, for us too. I was thinking about it today. Because, like, the fact is, like, we, we want to make a community here because, you know, we can't go anywhere else and learn our, our language, like, yeah. and our language is dying out. It's important for us to know our culture, like, and stuff like that. So it's really, like, it's important for us to build a community here because if you're going to leave, like, we can't, we can't leave and learn Blackfoot anywhere else but, mm. but our territory, man, and from, yeah. our, from our grandparents and stuff. And so it's like, it's almost a double-edged sword in, in, a, in a sense for like, I don't know if that's... Is that no, that, that right? is perfect. Yeah, so... I, and what, yeah. Did, what does that make you? If you lose, yeah, if you lose like, all yeah, your yeah. sense of, uh, of who you are, where you've come from, what's that make you? you yeah, know? it's like, why are we doing it anyways then? Yeah. You're hustling backwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like, exactly. can't be doing that. Like who we do it for. Mm -hmm. For ourselves, the, the people that are gonna come up next, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. for our children, for yeah. for our family, 
Paving for our lane. grandparents, for mm -hmm. our parents, you know, for everyone. Everyone that's everyone that's close, everyone that supports us, even even the people that we don't see that support, you know? Mm. Even like this it is really good at supporting local uh, like restaurants and everything like that. But I wish I wish the city would give more opportunity to local talent, especially and maybe maybe I'm wrong and maybe like this city is definitely giving the opportunity to local talents, but I want them to give the opportunity towards like stand up comedy, right? I want that uh, I feel like people are like, oh, he's a leverage comedian. They're leverage comedians. What fun can they make, right? But if anyone has ever gone to a comedy show, uh, you can tell that we are, we're way... Leatherich has an amazing scene and very powerful scene. There's an article many, many years ago written in the Galleries West magazine or in one of the arts periodicals. And there's a quote in it about, um, Lethbridge isn't a great place to earn a living as an artist, but it is a great place to connect and create art. And I think that's a, a really important statement um, because there isn't a huge audience or market necessarily for visual arts in particular. Um, and a very small but dedicated theater and gallery going audience. It's really hard to be a, a functioning, like w earn all of your living here as an artist. However, there's a great supportive community and there's the ability to connect with artists, to connect um, with various disciplines and create work. And I think that's very true about our community. It's good motivation. Yeah. There's good people in this community, man. Like. It's coming together, you know, it's just a small city, but I think that's where like magic happens, you know? You don't need to go to Vancouver to Toronto to like to blow or like, you know, it's right here, man. And so like, just the other day, one of our boys, Morris, uh, he like, he puts us on all the time, bro. Like, you know, like having people like that, that are big for the community, man, like, like, Elrev, like, you know, like these people that are trying to, trying to help just like, you know, and like, it's, it's hard because they been where we where yeah. we are essentially, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it all it all it's all gonna start somewhere, man. Yeah. And sure. having someone some people like that to look up to and ex especially being so close, it makes it it, it almost makes it easier, you know? Mm. And I think we have to encourage people to be um a little bit more um progressive in their thinking, um in terms of don't just go to the show, the big $100 show at the Ed Max or the Saddle Dome. Look at the little things and look at, um, you know, going to an intimate show at the Geomatic Attic and having like a, you know, a, a Grammy award winning performer come play. Um, but I think, you know, government, for example, has to support the arts, but also I think they could also be part of promoting it. Um, not not so much spending money on it, but but trying to find ways to get people to think outside of a you know a narrow tunnel visioned, like get them to try stuff, get them to encourage them to do new things, get them to go to downtown. Like you know, we'd love to be in downtown, you know, and we do do some things downtown. But I think the key for our city is that we can't let our downtown. Um, Language. We have to have stuff down there. We have to have things happening there, and um, all the best cities in the world have vibrant downtowns. And I worry about Lethbridge in that regard if we if we don't kind of promote that. So we're really excited about the opening of Festival Square coming in June. That's going to be an amazing public space for businesses and the public alike to really use that space and take it as their own. There's going to be a permanent stage on there where musicians and artists of all kinds they can use that stage as their platform to showcase their talent to others. Um, that space is also going to be available for business owners to use and rent um, for outdoor events. So we're really excited for that. Um, but yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to being heavily involved in that. It's right across from our office. So we're really looking forward to being a presence there every time there's something going on there. We really want to create really good relationships in the community. When it comes to improvements, when it comes to confronting our challenges, mm -hmm. you know, first and foremost in any community, if you don't confront that you have a challenge 
uh, in and around racism and discrimination in your community, if you can't even start the conversation or dialogue that that is a piece of existence in any community, then it really gets tough to understand, you know, where change needs to occur. Like sometimes we show work that's like about like decolonizing or is about like like those sort of histories that are really dark. Um, and when we're talking about white supremacy, if that's something that you as a white person feel uncomfortable with, it, it might bring up some pretty strong defensive feelings and like, that's okay. And I think that there's like certain stages where people are at in their learning and understanding of their place within this like territory that is not ours. This land has been stolen and uh, it's Blackfoot territory. and. I'm an immigrant, I happen to be here, and I think we have responsibilities to that, especially as an institution. Uh, we're, we're trying to be a space where, we can, where, where people can learn. What I love is when, when you get together with people that are driven by passion, that are driven to make change, and it's really something that they wanna contribute their brilliance to offering that change. It comes in the way we volunteer for committees. Mm -hmm. It's, it comes in the way that we step up for agencies and we bring our, our gift and our art. Mm -hmm. If we don't sit on committees in our community, if we don't volunteer to be on the Downtown Beers Ed Board or we don't volunteer to be you know, on any of the city committees reconciliation or you know, we don't volunteer to sit on the police commission or what have you, Galt Museum, you know, the, the list goes on. You know, that's where our, our voice can be missed and, and it is needed there. And every time I sit on a board or offer my insight um, from a volunteer perspective, I do it from a place of passion and I do it from a place of my honoring my ancestors, honoring my culture, honoring who I am and being authentic in that moment. Because I know that my voice could potentially open even a little crack for someone else to come through that crack. And that's what I want, that's what I think we should all strive to be. You know, we should all strive to break down barriers, create opportunities, and, and, and be mentors to young people.